What we're going to look at here is constructing vector equations for the given vector scenarios. For it, it doesn't matter which one we pick. So for example, if I pick t first, for this first example, t equals r plus s. We go back to the starting point of t, see what happens when we got r plus s. So for example, if I picked vector r, for example, to start with, that would be t minus s. If I picked vector s, for example, that would be minus r plus t. That would be my result. Any three of these answers would be fine. We pick a vector when we go to, from its starting point and around. So let's have a look at number two. So if we looked at vector r, for example, r equals minus p plus q. If we looked at vector p, that would equal q minus r. If we looked at vector q, for example, that would equal p plus r. Either one of those answers is fine. If we look at this vector down the bottom, number c, if we were to start at f, for example, f would equal minus g, because we get a starting point of f, which is here, and we go minus g plus d plus e. And the reason why I know it's minus g is because the Arrow, the vector is coming towards f, it's not going away. If it was going away, that's positive. Going towards is negative. So if we looked at g, for example, g would equal d plus e take f. If we were to look at vector d, for example, that would equal g plus f take e. We all can see this by the direction of our vectors. And if we we're going for vector e, vector e would equal negative d because it's going towards e plus g plus f. And that's how we can tell using the vector diagrams we have to create vector equations. This is where our positive and ne negative vectors come into play. And we've got to keep an eye on the direction to help us in identifying what uh, equation we use and whether we're, using a, we're adding the vector or subtracting the vector.